Good afternoon, dear aspirants. Welcome back again. In the last series regarding the coinage of India, we had a very healthy discussion. How the coinage in India evolved, and I also mentioned what was exactly the context for discussing about the coinage in India. So two aspects we had seen. First, that coinage in India, especially the ancient India, it is a part of art and culture. And as everyone knows, UPSC asked art and culture in ancient India. Then second thing. Coinage is also an untouched area. As of now, not a single question has directly or indirectly come upon the coinage. Either it's a prelim or it's a mains. Hence, it becomes very crucial for the upcoming prelims, that is, prelims 2023 and even 2024. And not to speak about mains 2023, that a question definitely is expected upon coinage. I am not saying that assuredly it will come, but there are chances that the questions will definitely be there, either now or then. And hence, as a part of foolproof strategy for a prelims preparation and the preparation for mains also, because ultimately, as we know. The UPSC preparation is integrated. So we should not overlook the coinage. We should not ignore the coinage. And I also mentioned why we were discussing the coinage. Because just recently, the Kushana era coins have been found. I also mentioned that as a part of archaeological excavations and discoveries, 10 number of times. The coinage has been unearthed, belonging to the particular dynasty, uh, ruling in a particular area. Then why we are discussing it today? It is the Kushara coins that we have found. Okay, as a part of recent discovery, Kushana had played a major role in the evolution of the coinage in India. In fact, the Kushana period acts like a watershed for the evolution of the coinage. The coins before Kushanas and the development of the coinage after Kushana, there is a huge gap and obviously the progressive one. And in this context, we have to see the very coinage. And as a part of this series, yesterday we saw, or in the last lecture, we had seen the very Indo Greeks and the Shakas who laid the foundation of Indian coinage in a proper manner. Before them also there was a coinage, but that was only the part of evolution. The foundation proper was laid by the Shakas as well as the Indovites. And in this very context, now today we have to discuss the Kushanas, the very Kushana dynasty which act like a watershed for coinage in India. So we will discuss about the Kushanas also and the other dynasties, how they took upon and how they continued the legacy of Kushanas. So, if you see in this context, then what we will see? The things we had already seen as a part of evolution, right since in this valley I had mentioned all the aspects about how the coin evolved. And then we proceeded one by one. Now, coming to the Kushanas proper, okay? If you see the Kushana coins, then we will see that first the Indo Greeks came in a post modern period and then the Shakas came. And as I mentioned, coinage was available to us even before them. And it was in a postmodern period, the Shakas as well as the Indo Greeks, they had laid the foundation of coinage. Now, the most important foreign invaders who established themselves in India during the postmodern period, they are the Kushanas. And once the Kushanas established themselves, the very founder of the Kushan dynasty and the very first great ruler, his name is Vima Khad Pasis. Okay, his name is Vima Khad Pasis. If you see the Vima Khad Pasis, then he becomes the first ever ruler in India to issue the gold coins 
to issue the silver coins and to issue the copper coins together. So, in this context or with this regards to the statement, what we have to keep in mind? That we have to keep in mind that Ushanas definitely issued the coins of different metals. So, as I mentioned, Bhima Khadapasis, we find his gold coins also, we find his copper coins also, and we find his silver coins also. But the point is that Ushanas are very, very famous for issuing the largest number of copper coins. Okay, in the history of Indian coinage, and especially harping back to the ancient context, Ushanas issued the largest number of the copper coins. And that's why I have mentioned they definitely issued the other coins also, the coins of other metals. But the coins of other metals, that is metals other than copper, they were not a priority for Kushanas. And that's why these coins were issued on a lesser scale. And in this context only, by twisting the statements, UPC is going to ask you the questions. Okay. So once we are clear, that Kushanas issued the largest number of the copper coins and it was the first Kushana ruler, that is first in the sense, first in India, Viva Khadapasis, who issued the coins of copper, gold and silver, the three metals together. Then what we have to keep in mind, that Kushanas are also famous for issuing a very high quality of the gold coins. <laughs> okay. So, till Kushanas, whatever coinage we saw, we had a gold coins and as we saw they were issued by Indo Greeks. But definitely the gold coins of the Indo Greeks, they could not be a match for Kushan gold coins. Kushanas might have issued largest number of the copper coins, yet they also issued a large number of gold coins. The gold coins which were issued by Kushanas, they were definitely a very high quality of the gold coins. I am not saying they are best quality of the gold coins. Because the term best will be reserved for the successors of the Kushanas that we will see. So, again, now it is very clear for us that Kushanas, apart from the copper coins, they also issued the gold coins, and a very high quality of the gold coins are visible under Kushanas. And the gold coins of the Kushanas, they are famously known as double dinars. Okay? The very famous gold coins of Kushanas, they are known as double dinars. And as I mentioned, it's a very first high quality gold coin of the Indian coinage. Right? Or in the whole Indian subcontinent, the first ever high quality gold coin is a double dinar of the Kushanas. So this is also a very crucial exam oriented point. Then, again, when we are discussing about the Kushana coinage, we have to focus upon Bhima Khadapasis, the first ruler. And in this context, what we will see? That, as I have mentioned, the coins of gold, silver and copper together issued by Bhima Khadapasis. In these coins, you will see, especially the coins of gold and copper, they have survived till today. Right? They have survived till today. The very gold and copper coins of the Bhima Khadapasis, they have survived the test of the time. This point we have to keep in mind. And here again we can see the image of the Kushana gold coins. And that day also I mentioned that this whole surface, whether it's a obverse or a reverse, the image and the design, the kind of inscriptions and the script, and the very uh, border outlines with the designs, they are known as legend. Everything is known as legions. <laughs> so, this is also a very crucial aspect. Then, after Viva Khadapasis, what we will see? Greatest Kushan ruler, Kanishka. Okay? You must have read about him. You must have heard the name of Kanishka. And Kanishka, the greatest Kushan emperor. And everyone knows that the very shock era we are using today. The government of India is using the Shaka era. Right? And in fact, in 2016, the question was also asked about Shaka era. Okay. So, this is also one of the aspects how to study for the examination. 
that once we are discussing something important about a particular aspect for example a coinage in this context it is a part of art and culture at the same time i am giving you some value addition an additional exam oriented information and why i am giving that because a question has already been asked in this context even though directly the question was not mentioning kanishka as such but the question on shakara has already come and since the question on shakara has already come so we have to see when we are discussing it regarding kanishka so it's a beautiful way to go for a revision and a holistic understanding of the history because as normally we know the history seems to be factual for every aspirant and everyone is concerned how we should remember so this is a technique i have demonstrated uh, directly through this video that how we should study the history okay? so this is a better way or in fact the one of the best ways to understand the history and not only understand but to retain the history be it a fact or be it be it a analysis of the fact so kanishka basically the greatest kushan emperor in the context of coinage he also issued the two coins or the coins of a two metals that is copper and gold that means kanishka's silver coins seems to be absent right what is the meaning of this very sentence or a key point that if he is issuing the coins in a gold and copper so somewhere the silver coins seems to be absent okay so as of now based on the current evidences in a future something may change if we are able to find the silver coins of kanishka in future that is for posterity so as of now we have the gold and copper coins of kanishka so silver coins seems to be absent then next that we have to come so once kanishka issued the coins in a gold and copper the two metals within gold also you will see the kushana coins and especially the kanishka's coins they were issued in a two denominations right as we can see here within gold also the coins were issued in a two denominations the higher denominator denominator higher denominator that is dinar it was known as stator that dinar was known as stator and the very sub parts for very some values of this higher dinar they were known as quarter dinars right the very sub values of this dinar were known as quarter dinar so this is also a crucial aspect in the context of kushan coinage then obviously we are able to see some images here again as i mentioned the legends on the kushan coins so we have the first one aradesh right a very technical term it seem it may seem to be aradesh to basically it's a iranian goddess of wealth right? as we can see later on also she is a iranian goddess of wealth okay so iranian goddess of wealth aradesh to she was one of the prime figures or she was one of the prime symbols which was depicted upon the kushan coins and if you see the coins on which or upon which she has been showed that is a copper coin right it at least in this image it doesn't seems to be a gold coin but that doesn't mean that aradesh to the iranian goddess of wealth was portrayed only on copper coins we can't say directly about that right? what we just have to keep in mind that aradesh to the iranian goddess of wealth was a prime uh, figure as a part of design and a image or embossing and a symbolic upon the coins of kushanas then we have also image, other images also like one is mao one is faro one is atsho okay so these images now we can see what exactly we have to go through in the context of uh, these images because all these are mythical figures all these figures are comparable to gods and goddesses belonging to different eras belonging to different religious beliefs and belonging to different dynasties but still you will see all these images we are directly able to see on the kushana coinage and 
the very context I mentioned about the very series of the coinage, the two video series that we are discussing, that the Kushana gold coins which were unearthed in India, they were having the images of the gods and goddesses. So obviously, if you see the gods and goddesses, then what we see? Then under Kanishka, especially a multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and multi basically uh, what we can say racial society was visible and it was coexisting harmoniously and that's why we find that the Kushana coins will have the Greek gods and goddesses, Roman deities, Iranian deity I mentioned about Aradeshu. Okay? Then very Vedic deities and the Buddhist deities. The Greek, Roman, Iranian, Vedic as well as Buddhist deities, they are clearly visible in the context of Kushana coins. Again, what we can see, if you come to the Vedic deity proper, the Vedic deity proper, then what we are going to see? In case of Vedic deity proper, the goddess Lakshmi was going to be the chief figure. On a Kushana coins, we can find the image of Goddess Lakshmi. And if the Aradashtra was, was or is an Iranian goddess of wealth, the Goddess Lakshmi is a similar counterpart. Okay? This Goddess Lakshmi is also the goddess of wealth, as we can see in the Hindu or Vedic religious beliefs. Even today, a very Dhanteras or a Lakshmi Puja, as it is done in the uh, period of Diwali, that is for the worship of and pleasing the goddess of wealth. So we have Aradesh to the Iranian goddess of wealth. We have Vedic goddess Lakshmi again as the goddess of wealth on the images of the Kushana. Okay. Then again you can see Aradesh to as a Iranian goddess of wealth. Next we have Oshio. Okay. Next we have Oshio that is Lord Shiva. So Lord Shiva was called Oshio uh, during the time of Kushanas. And again, as a part of uh, a Latin and a Greek combination. Then we have the moon deity or deity, Myro. Okay, we have the moon deity or deity, Myro, Myro and ultimately the Buddha. Right? Ultimately, we have also the Buddha. And this was the reason. So, Aradash to the Iranian goddess of wealth, then Osho, that is Shiva, then Mao is one of the deity, Paro is one of the deity. Yes, so many deities are there, apart from the Myro, the moon deity and the image of Lord Buddha. But of course, at least on the coins of the Kushanas, we don't have the image of any Jain Tirthankar. But that doesn't mean that Kushanas were anti-Jains. Okay? Kushanas were very tolerant towards all religious sects. And Jainism used to flourish under Kushanas, okay? especially under Kanishka. We can find around 1st century AD when Kanishka was ruling. So Mathura had emerged okay, as a center of Jainism. Mathura was emerged, emerging and Mathura basically emerged as a center of Jainism. So Kanishka and the Kushan rulers they were tolerant towards Jainism also. Only it is about the coins that we don't find any image of Jain Tirthankar. Then, apart from gods and goddesses, we also have the images of the kings on a Kushana coins. And I already mentioned that it was the Indo Greeks who brought the tradition of having the images of the kings on their coins. That too on a regular basis. That too on a regular basis. And in this context, Tatwana, the Indian dynasty, that also this started the practice. Satwana, the Indian dynasty, that also brought a practice of having the images of kings on their coins. Okay. The Indo Greeks as well as Satwanas, they were already having the images of the coins, uh, images of the kings on the coins. Now, in case of Kushanas also, we can have the images of the king. But what is the point? Images of the kings on a Kushana coins, they are very, very specific. Okay? Images of the kings on a Kushana coins, they are very, very specific. 
Why? Because unlike the Indo Greeks or the Satmanas, which the coins of uh, the dynasties like Indo Greeks and Satmanas, they are not able to give a minute or a detailed description about a king through the picture or a symbol. But in case of Kushanas, what we can see? In case of Kushanas, the coins will give a minute description about the king. And the best example as we can have is the very first ruler, that is the Vima Khadapasis. Who is the first ruler in India? Vima Khadapasis, the so called real founder of the Kushana dynasty in India. So his coins we have. And in these coins, you will see Vima Khadapasis. Okay? They will show a focus upon an individual. So individual attention or individualistic approach would be visible in Kushana coins. Individualistic approach. So UPSC will use such a terms. Individualistic approach. And that's why you will see on the coins, Vima Khadapasis. Okay? So this is a description of Vima Khadapasis. So how we can see Vima Khadapasis? That he has been shown in a full figure or life size figure. Vima Khadapasis has been shown in a full or life size figure. A full beard has been shown. Big long nose is there. Straight and long nose is there. The very Aryan description. Aryans also they had a broad forehead and the long nose. And Aryans also came from Central Asia. And the Kushanas also came from Central Asia. And both of them belong to the same race. And that's why you will see a full beard, a big nose, a very wolf like nose. Then, face was looking like a warrior. Vima okay? Khadapas is being a ruler. His face is looking like a fierce warrior. And of course, he was a warrior. So, no doubt about that. And that's why the realistic portrayal is there. Okay? It is not a fictional portrayal, it is a real, realistic portrayal. Then, a special information is that he has been shown with a deformed skull. Okay? His skull seems to be deformed as a part of his portrayal. He is, hearing, uh, he is wearing a very high helmet. So, to protect his own skull, he is wearing a helmet. The tunic, as you can see, the cultural and social aspect, the attire, overcoat, and the felt boots. Okay? So, this attire, this is considered as a modern attire, the western attire which became possible for us after the so-called industrial revolution. But the thing is that it was at least 2000 years ago, if not earlier, the very Kushanas, Shakas and other Central Asian uh, rulers and the tribes, they were wearing the helmets, they were wearing the felt hats. The kind of cowboy hats which we see in a Bollywood movies. They were wearing the tunics, they were wearing the blazers and the coats, they were wearing the high heel boots and the so called uh, jackets, you can see, because they were coming from a very harsh climate and this was a common attire for them. So it's not a modern era attire as we normally believe, it's a misconception. It was introduced way back in India by these Shakas and Kushanas. So these very attires, they also give a glimpse into the culture of the people who were coming from Central Asia. The so coinage itself is a part of art and culture and again coinage helps to exemplify the culture of the people and the rulers and the dynasty which were now entering in India. So that's why uh, UPSC will take a note of it. But the question is definitely expected as I mentioned. Then if you come, after Kushanas, so as I mentioned, Kushana was like a watershed and that's why we went in such a details regarding the Kushana coins. Now, I also mentioned, when the Kushanas were evolving the Indian coinage, already indo Greeks had introduced the coinage, their own coinage. And Satmanas also, as a part of their interaction with indo Greeks also, with Shakas also, 
and with the Kushanas also. Tatmanas as a part of Indian dynasty and being an Indian rulers, they also issued their own coins. And if you see the Satwana coins, then what we have to keep in mind that Satwana coins they were issued in a copper also, they were issued in a bronze also, okay. they were issued interestingly in a different and a unique metal that is lead. The lead coins were not issued by any other dynasty in India, be it an ancient era, be it a medieval era or even in a modern context. That means throughout the Indian history, except Sat Vahans, we don't find the coins of our two metals, that is lead and potin. Okay? The two coins, the lead and potin, they were issued by Sat Vahans. And obviously, copper and bronze coins, they were uh, being issued for long now. So that was a very routine practice for them. But Satwanas are very, very famous due to their lead and potin coins only, as I have mentioned here. Okay? They might issue the coins of other metals, but they were known only due to their unique coins, the priority coins, that is lead and potin. So this point is also crucial. And if you see, it is the Satwanas who issued the largest number of coins in India. Okay, Satwana has issued the largest number of the coins in India. It's a very crucial aspect. And they all they also issued, or they were the first one to issue the coins of a most diverse metal. Okay? Largest metal diversity in India or issuing the coins is found in the context of Satwahans. Why? Already we are able to see the coins of four metals, copper and bronze and lead and protein. But apart from that, Tathwahans also issued the gold and silver coins. Okay? Tathwahans also issued gold and silver coins. And here the very interesting twist is there. Okay? Here a very interesting twist is there. And that's why I have mentioned history is not factual as such. It's a misconception. It's a misnomer. The history is factual. History is very, very analytical. History is very, very conceptual. And within these analysis and concepts, we have to embed and we have to fit the facts. So, Satwanas, they issued the coins of a largest diversity, the diversity of the metals which are not found anywhere, issued by any dynasty. So, copper, bronze, lead, and a potty, the four coins, plus the gold and silver. Okay? Plus the gold and silver. But our twist is that, as I have mentioned here, Satwahans did not issue the gold and silver coins on their own. This is a very crucial word. That means, as a part of their original coinage, as the coins which were originally issued by Satwahans, we don't find any gold or silver coins. Yet, we have the gold and silver coins of the Satwahans. Yet, we have the gold and silver coins of the Satwanas. So, this seems to be a very contrasting statement. Okay? Anyone can ask the question. Or anyone will ask the question out of curiosity. And this is very, very contrasting statement. So, what was the case? So, when I am saying that Satwana coins are issued in a different metals, the largest diversity, and it also increases the gold and silver, the point is that the gold and silver coins of the Satwanas which we find today, they were originally issued by Romans in case of gold and silver coins in case of shakas. Okay. So the point was that Satwaras they had a flourishing trade and commerce with the Roman Empire, and Satwaras were also witnessing. The first ever urbanization of Deccan, where Satwanas were ruling from Deccan, and as such, they were witnessing the first ever urbanization of the Deccan. So, if you see here, so this is a Satwara kingdom and an empire, okay. And in certain cases, it even reached up to the so called eastern coast of India. And since the Satwanas basically they were issuing, okay or they were enjoying the so-called 
trade and commerce with Roman Empire, which was very flourishing trade and commerce. So what we can see, we can see that due to Roman Empire trade and commerce, Satwanas were enjoying a favorable balance of trade. Satwanas, they were enjoying a favorable balance of trade, and as such, Roman Empire had to compensate through the gold coins to have a balance of trade in the context of Satwanas. Okay, to bridge that gap of the balance of trade in the context of Satwanas, it was the Roman Empire which was compelled to compensate with gold. Okay, and this is the reason we find the gold coins of the Satwanas. So Satwanas were restriking the gold coins of Romans. Right? Satwanas were restriking the gold coins of Romans. Then, in case of silver coins of the Satwanas, what is the case? That the greatest Satwahan ruler, right? greatest Satwahan ruler, his name is Gautami Putra Satkarni. Greatest Satwan ruler, his name is Gautami Putra Satkarni. A kind of GPS. His short form is GPS. It is very important for us to remember such a memorics. So we know the GPS so easily by remembering the GPS in a today's context. We can have our own connection with the Satwaras, the greatest Satwana ruler, Gautami Putra Satkarni. He defeated Shaka's, right? Gautami Putra Satkarni. He defeated Shaka, Shaka's n number of times. And on one occasion, he had defeated Shaka ruler, Nahapana. Okay, on one occasion, GPS, that is Gautami Putra Satkarni, the greatest Satwahan ruler. He had defeated the Shakarudar Nahafana, also known as Nifana. Okay? Sometimes he is pronounced as a Nifana also. And as we discussed earlier also, largest number of the silver coins in India, they were issued none other than by Shakas. Okay? Largest number of the silver coins in India. They were issued only by one dynasty, that is Shakas. And since the Gautami Putra Satkarni, the Satvahan ruler, he was able to defeat the Shakas. So we will see Gautami Putra Satkarni restruck. Gautami Putra Satkarni restruck 8000 Shaka coins. Right? He restruck 8000 Shaka coins. That is Shaka silver coins into his own name. Right? Gautami Putra Satkarni, he restruck 8000 Shaka coins in his own name. This point we have to keep in mind. And that is the reason we find the coins of gold and silver in case of Sat Vahans also. So now you must have got the idea how diverse was the coinage under Sat Vahans. So before coming to an end, Regarding Satwahans, what additional things we should know? If we saw the so many images of the gods and goddesses on the coins of Kushanas, then what was the case in case of Satwanas? What kind of images and the symbols or religions we can find upon Satwana coins? So, these legends and the symbols in case of Satwanas, they are more and less similar to Shakas. Why? Because majority of the Satwana coins, they were restruck after defeating Shakas. So, so many Shaka symbols they have, and the images, they were taken by Satwanas upon their coins. So, we have various fauna motifs. Okay? So, we have various motifs of the faunas, like elephant, bull, the very elephant and bull we had on Shaka coins also. On Shaka coins, we saw elephant and hill type of coins. Bull and the hill type of coins. Okay, so as a part of Safan coins, also we have various fauna elephant, bull. Then additionally, we have lions, okay? and that is very interesting because uh, the area that is Deccan and South India, along with the parts of East India where the Safanas were ruling, this area is not known for lions. Okay? 
this area is not known for lions but still we find lions why because shakas were ruling in gujarat and in gujarat we have the asiatic lions at gir okay today also and that is the reason probably that it were the shaka coins who were using the image of the lions they were again taken by sat vahans and that's why we have the lions then horse the horse was like a ubiquitous symbol now our the shakas indo greeks and the kushanas the foreign tribes who entered india they introduced a regular cavalry warfare okay they introduced a regular cavalry warfare and that's why even the satmanas were also acquainted with the cavalry warfare and this is the reason that horse as a symbol we can easily find okay this is the reason the horse as a symbol we can easily find but what i am mentioning apart from fauna that is animal diversity we have some natural features also yes we have some physical or natural features also so we will find the flora in the form of trees okay? and we can have the physical features like hill so hill and tree these are also the additional features the fauna and the natural features and the flora so as a part of biodiversity and ecosystem satwana coins will present a juxtaposed picture or intertwined picture so this is very crucial aspect then again in the context of language or legends or a kind of inscription what we can find portrait and bilingual legends are visible okay? the images on the satwana coins they are in the form of portraits and when it comes to language bilingual legends are also visible okay? bilingual legends are also visible so again as i am mentioned here that kshatrapa type coins or shaka type of coins for inspiring these very legends in case of shakas also we saw shakas were using the brahmi script shakas were using the greek language and even the kharosthi script so in case of satvanas also the bilingual legends the very prakrut and the so called greek legends and the portrait uh, symbols they were inspired by shaka kshatrapas So this is also very crucial exam oriented aspect about sat vahans so my dear aspirants i'm sure and i am able to see that all of you are enjoying the session and this is a very curious session a okay? very untouched area and now we are coming towards the end of this session okay? we are almost about to conclude this session so as we saw in case of indo greeks shakas and uh, ushanas they were foreign invaders who became the part of india and they introduced a new cultural traits in india and these new cultural traits they were adopted by indian dynasties also and that's why we will discuss the sat vahans also but biggest bonanza was yet to come but biggest bonanza was yet to come and that was brought by or that was introduced or presented before us by one big indian empire a very famous great indian empire gupta empire okay? a very very famous empire of india the last great empire that we can find in ancient india okay? that is gupta empire and all the features that we can see in case of indo greek coins shaka coins kushana coins that is foreign invaders and the features in the satwana coins all such features combined together they would be visible in the gupta coins and not only these features will be taken by guptas as it is okay or as a part of a replica the guptas will completely modify them so it was not a copy paste gupta will bring their own innovation and the biggest contribution of the guptas to the indian coinage is that they completely indianize their coinage okay this is a very crucial point from the exam perspective guptas were the first indian dynasty to completely indianize the coins satwana was the first indian dynasty to issue the largest diversity of the coins 
but yet the foreign influence was visible in case of satwaras the so upsc will frame the statement like that right? foreign influence was visible in case of satwaras but in case of guptas we find completely indianized features we don't uh, uh, find or we are not able to find any kind of foreign influence so this is a very crucial statement then if the kushana is issued the largest number of the copper coins okay what i mentioned if the kushana is in, uh, introduced and issued largest number of copper coins then largest number of the gold coins they were issued by guptas okay? largest number of the gold coins they were issued by guptas and what more what we have to keep in mind kushana if they issued the largest number of the copper coins they also issued a very good quality of gold coins right kushana also issued very good quality of gold coins but now guptas were going to better them guptas were going to surpass them so what we can find in case of guptas guptas not only issued the largest number of the gold coins but the best quality of gold coins in india ever okay? best quality of the gold coins in india ever before them and even after them we cannot find any dynasty including the very mughal empire also which also issued the gold coins we cannot find the coins of the gold which are better than the guptas so guptas issued the best quality of the gold coins and guptas issued the largest number of the gold coins because guptas were fabulously rich guptas were fabulously rich again due to the flourishing trade and commerce with the roman empire and also the very uh, uh, self generation of the wealth the indigenous generation of the wealth on the part of guptas then what we will see that guptas basically issued mostly the coins of gold and silver so we find some copper coins of guptas okay copper coins in gupta period are not absent as such we will find some coins of the co copper but being fabulously rich okay being fabulously rich guptas were issuing the very high denomination coins that is gold and silver guptas were issuing very high denomination coins that is gold and silver then we saw different features and highlights on the kushana coins and what kind of legends or what kind of images or what kind of symbols and the designs were there on kushana coins so if you see the guptas and since they indianized the coinage we will find that guptas were ferocious hunters guptas were excellent horsemen including the chariot riders and as such we will find the scenes of hunting are very common in case of guptas scenes of hunting are very common in case of guptas again guptas were mostly or major part of the gupta empire it was in northwest of india and north india so again we find image of a lion we don't find tiger as such right? we are not able to see the image of a tiger as such so scenes of hunting a lion then rhino right? rhinosaurus was also hunted by the guptas that has also been shown then a ruler holding a bow or a battle axe these are famous images <laughs> that that we can find on a gupta coins but most famous images on a gupta coins that we can find belong to samudra gupta okay the most famous images belong to samudra gupta in case of images upon the coins so like kushanas and as atwanas and even indo greeks guptas also issued the coins which were having the image of rulers right guptas also issued the coins which were having the image of rulers and as such what we will see that samudra gupta has been shown playing a lute or a veena a musical instrument right samudra gupta has been shown playing a lute or a veena lute is a english word veena is a indian word on his coins right very samudra gupta the greatest gupta ruler and the one who is known as napoleon of india okay 
ब्रिटिश स्कॉलर वी ए स्मिथ ही कॉल्ड समुद्र गुप्ता एज अ नेपोलियन ऑफ इंडिया ड्यू टू हिज मिलिटरी अचीवमेंट्स तो ही हैज बीन शोन प्लेइंग अ वीणा अ स्ट्रिंग म्यूजिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट वीणा इज अ स्ट्रिंग म्यूजिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट ओके दिस इज अ वेरी फेमस कॉइन अगेन समुद्र गुप्त और इवन चंद्रगुप्त सेकंड हिज सन द ग्रैंड सन ऑफ समुद्र गुप्त इज कुमार गुप्त और सन ऑफ चंद्रगुप्त सेकंड दिस एम्परर्स हैव बीन शोन परफॉर्मिंग अश्वमेध सेक्रीफाइजेस गुप्ता रूलर्स एंड एम्परर्स दे आर शोन परफॉर्मिंग द अश्वमेध सेक्रीफाइजेस आल्सो सो इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट यू विल सी गुप्ता कंप्लीटली चेंज द डायमेंशन completely changed the outlook of a coinage in india so whatever they were able to observe from the past coins they took all the good aspects and features of the past coins but completely indianized them and then they brought their own innovation which were not surpassed surpassed anywhere else which which could not be surpassed anywhere else not not within india also and even outside india This is a contribution of the Guptas to the coinage in India. Okay, this is the contribution of Guptas to the coinage in India, and that's why the coinage section becomes very crucial from the exam perspective also, and it becomes very very interesting for general or overall understanding also, and a specific understanding from UPSC perspective, okay? specific understanding from the civil services perspective. So. now as i mentioned before ending and end note what we can see the expected mains question as a end note what we can see we can have the expected mains question so the question is like that the very common trend of the upsc in a recent years the 15 marks question or a 10 marks question in a two ways the upsc is asking the questions in a gs the question is for 15 marks and 250 words okay question is for 15 marks and 250 words so what is the question if post vedic period was the age of numismatic evolution and as i mentioned earlier numismatic means study of coins study of coins or coinage okay so if the post vedic period the keywords we should get into correctly as yes, for reading the question keywords are very very important keywords are directly giving you a clue at how you are going to write an answer and what is being expected by upsc so if the post vedic period was a age of numismatic evolution again numismatic evolution would be the keyword okay and when it is talking about post vedic period it is presenting some other period also before us in the same question and when the two periods will be presented in the same question the question becomes a comparative question the question is hinting us to write towards comparing the two different eras right the question is asking us to compare us the two different eras but for the same thing comparison is between the two different eras but for the same thing and what is that same or common thing coinage that is numismatic so from that perspective we have to read the question so again i will read if the post vedic period was a age of numismatic evolution then post maurya era okay, again as i mentioned second era or period post maurya era brought numismatic revolution here we have numismatic evolution here we have numismatic revolution and a post maurya era means what the very era of indo greeks shakas okay satvahans and kushanas so this angle we have to keep in mind post vedic period means as we discuss the background evolution that is the very silver and copper 
पंच मार्क कॉइन्स सिल्वर एंड कॉपर पंच मार्क कॉइन्स तो द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग अस टू कंपेयर हाउ द इंडियन कॉइनेज इवॉल्ड ड्यूरिंग द पोस्ट वेदिक पीरियड इट इज द एरा ऑफ पंच मार्क कॉइन्स कॉइन्स ऑफ सिल्वर एंड कॉपर एंड देन आफ्टर द एंड ऑफ मोरन एम्पायर हाउ द डायवर्सिटी ऑफ द कॉलेज इंक्रीज हाउ द डायनेसिज एंड द रूलर्स इश्यूइंग द कॉइन्स दैट ऑल्सो इंक्रीज हाउ द एस्थेटिक सेल्स ऑफ द कॉइन्स इंक्रीज हाउ द कॉइन्स बिकेम द मीडियम टू पोर्ट्रे सोशल कल्चरल रिलीजियस पॉलिटिकल एंड ओवरऑल द वेरी panorama and a picture of the time and how we are able to see them in a today's context okay and how basically this post modern era it was a revolution because in a short time right in a very short time it was able to bring a kind of coinage overhaul in india a coinage bombardment or a coinage we can say the bonanza in india and in that context we have to write the answer so we have understood the question properly and accordingly after taking into account different sub parts and the key components of the question we have to justify and we have to write an answer because ultimately question is asking us how far do you agree okay how far do you agree that means your opinion is being asked upsc is trying to take your own opinion or upsc is trying to judge you by your own opinion and when we have to see such a keyword how far do you agree so it is obvious that it should not be our own opinion right it should not be our personal opinion and no kind of personal bias whatsoever has to be there whatever we are going to write as a part of our opinion or view regarding the coinage that should be historical whatever has been presented before us by the historians nothing personal so that we have to keep in mind and accordingly a balance answer will have to be presented for a getting the highest marks or good marks in the examination <coughs> okay a very balanced answer and balanced view we have to present to get the very very good marks so we have discussed thoroughly all the dimensions and holistic understanding of the topic we have gained now i'm sure all about that and we have also seen how to interlink all the aspects okay we have also seen how we have to interlink all these aspects and accordingly we have also discussed the question and what is the question what is that demand of the question what is the direction of the question what is the tone of the question and whether the question has any hidden meaning or not and how we have to write a very balanced answer without involving our personal opinion so on this note i will like to take the leave of all of you as i mentioned being a very important topic which was already in news i discuss at a length with you in a two series regarding coinage i am sure you have got all the understanding of the coinage now so once again we are going to meet with some new topic which may be in the news and even if it is not in the news as a part of learning the history in a very different way in a simple way also but in a different way and just enjoying it so that it becomes a part of our dna till the time we are able to crack the ups thank you very much so once again we will meet thank you